Uh, I am Dr. Evelyn Bethune, and Mary McLeod Bethune is my grandmother. My dad wow. is Robert Bethune Sr., uh, her only child. Uh, we grew up in Daytona on Bethune Cooper's campus. But my, well, my grandmother wasn't just the founder of a college. She was an activist first, and she, everything she did was ordered by God. Wow. She believed that, and that was why she was able to do the things she did. You know, she came from Maysville, South Carolina which is about the size of this room. <laughs> wow. She was an advisor to five United States presidents. She was on the founding body of the United Nations. Wow. Okay, she was an ambassador to Liberia and was given their highest order of honor. In Haiti, she got the star of Haiti for the work that she was doing internationally. The military was being integrated because of her work with Eleanor Roosevelt. There would not have been any red tails if it hadn't been for Mary McLeod Bethune and wow. Eleanor Roosevelt. And so a lot of times when we're talking about the stuff we're doing, we're not doing nearly as much That's as right. they did. And we have so much more. Right. So what's the problem? Our faith is in the wrong thing. Mm. My grandmother believed in God first, not man. Mm. We believe in man and hope that God will step in and help us. Do <laughs> right. Wow. Wow. You better so preach. we have to fix that. Fix it. And that's what's wrong with our community. We've stepped away from our faith. Mm. And if we don't get our folks back in order, we're going to still continue to be climbing uphill. Well, we have candidates running who say God first. And they're not scared to let people know they have faith because of who they might offend. Nobody else cares about offending folks. The Republicans don't care. They say whatever they want to say. But we scared to say God. I ain't scared. I see that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's why you got to smile today. And an endorsement. Because you have to know who God is in order to have power. That's right. That lasts. Because man's power only lasts for a moment. My grandmother's stuff is still being talked about. She died in 1955. Wow. And people still quote her, and the works that she did are still visible. Wow. Bethune Cookman is producing a product every day. Mm -hmm. My grandmother's buried on that campus, but the work she did is still alive. National Council of Negro Women owns a building on Pennsylvania Avenue between the Capitol and the White House. It's paid for. My grandmother started in CNW because she knew the power of bringing black women together. That's what she did it for. When you put black women on purpose, you will never be defeated because we know how to pray first and then get up and do the work. Smart men always got good, strong black women to take care of them. <laughs> smart. That's where that power comes from. I'm a pretty smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that to just say that we just have to get our stuff in order. Amen. So that what we do affects generations, not just the moment that we're standing in. Because if we want our babies and our grandchildren, our great grandchildren, to not have to fight these same battles that I was fighting when I was growing up that my daddy was fighting in 1904, and we still talking about the same stuff. Right. And it's worse now, because it's legal to shoot us down in the street and say, stand your ground. Mm. We have to be about the business of making sure that we don't keep repeating the same things over and over again. And our young people have to understand this stuff ain't new. They didn't create it. And stop trying to build from the start and build on what has been presented. Build on the foundations that have been put in place. That's how you build things that last. You don't have to start over every single time. And we have to teach our history and stop waiting on somebody else to tell us who we are. Amen. And ask them permission to talk about the power of being black. We act like we're scared to say it. Right. We start whispering about black folks like we stand in church somewhere. <laughs> and all I'm saying is, every church has a room where they have Sunday school. You got a sanctuary. 
So why are we waiting on public school to teach our history? Amen. 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 My grandmother didn't wait on somebody to tell her to build a school. She started on a garbage dump mm. and turned it into a $700 billion production. <clears throat> That's what you do. You know, you don't wait on somebody to give you a brick, you make some. Mm. They always talk about the pie has on so many pieces. Build a pie factory. Okay. Put our people to work. That's right. We have to stop waiting on somebody else. Mm. And if we don't get that, we're not going to never get about the business. I see what you're doing as what makes the future look better. Because you know who God is. And if you listen, he'll tell you what to do. Yes, he will. Amen. Amen. Who are you because because then you have to do the work. That's right. Yeah. Because he always tells us. Mm. It's just that sometimes we wait on approval. Somebody well, else. who do we want to approve God's word? Come on. <laughs> That's the piece we're missing. Because if God tells you to do it, he's going to provide whatever mechanism you need to get it done. You just have to take that step. Amen. That's right. All right. Amen. Well, I am honored, ma'am, to have you here tonight. Thank you so very much.